Um, so good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you all are in the world. Welcome to our webinar, um, Unlocking Insights from Latin R, Collaboration and Innovation in Data Science webinar, brought to you by the R Consortium. The R Consortium works with and supports key organizations developing R software through grants and sponsorship worldwide. Please visit our website to learn all the details on how your organization can become a member. My name is Elenia Quintero. Today's an answer. I have a few housekeeping items before we begin. This webinar will be an interactive Q&A section between you and our presenters today. Just type in a question into the question window and at any point during the presentation um, and make sure to click the submit button. Near the end of the webinar, we'll try to answer as many of your questions as time gives us. Alrighty, so let's get started. This webinar focuses on unlocking insight from Latin R, collaboration and innovation in data science webinar. Here are Jan Janina, Natalia, and Riva, who are the co-founders and co-chairs of Latin R. They will share insights into the vibrant R community in Latin America and the evolution of Latin R conference over its past six editions. Ladies, thank you so much. And you can go ahead and begin with your presentation. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. We are so happy to be here. Thank you to be connected and th uh, thank you to our consortium to organize this uh, webinar and also to Elenia that he she take care of all the details of this webinar. Um, first of all, if it's your first time uh, and you don't know about what is Latinar, I will tell you. Latinar is uh, the Latin American conference about the use of R in research and development. And uh, we begin in 2018, and we have a, it's an annual conference um, that um, has been happening uh, from 2018. Who we are? Well, uh, in this webinar, we will talk, uh, we are Janina Bellini from Argentina, Riva Quiroga from Chile, and myself, my name is Natalia da Silva, I am from Uruguay, and we will go over uh, some aspects of Latin art, the evolution of Latin art, um, <clears throat> some projects in Latin art and the future, and um, that is um, some of the things that we will talk about. First, we will talk about the evolution of Latin art and its impact on the community, the second important point in this webinar will be the Latin art success stories and future projects. And finally, Riva will talk about the future of Latin art. Uh, well, our first point, the evolution of Latin art and its impact on the community. How it did, did it begin? Well, in October of 2018, uh, Heather Turning in, in some Slack, the Slack from uh, our user group organizer, she mentioned that the R Foundation Conference Committee would like to see academic focus R events in regions that are not covered by the user. Then in just uh, at least of uh, one week, a group of Latin American R ladies organized our first uh, call uh, to talk about uh, how to organize a conference uh, uh, trying to answer the R Foundation um, idea, okay? And one year later, in 2018, on September, we have our first Latin R conference. And our first Latin R conference was in Buenos Aires and in Argentina, and was a satellite conference of a bigger conference in that moment. And we have around 100 participants, around 66 contributions to keynotes and four tutorials. We have, for example, uh, Johnny Breyer, that is a reference from the R community as our one of our keynotes. And also we have someone local that was Sosa, Walter Sosa Escudero. And you can see some image about the event was really good. Was the first time that uh, here uh, we were the chairs at that moment. And we met in that day, the, the conference day. Everything happens virtually. And that was kind of magic. Uh, what is this conference about? This is a data science conference. Why is a data science conference? Because we have three key points and things that are important for us. We try to put the focus on computational tools. Also, we have 
a lot of things uh, with focus on statistical methods. And also there are a lot of applications, interdisciplinary applications. And these are three key points to have data science project. Uh, as you can see, in uh, this is an image of a presentation of Jenny Bryan in 2018, and she asked this question. Is data science just a trend term for statistics? No, it's not. And statistics is a key important for, uh, point for data science. We don't have data science with, without statistics, but also it's a different thing. You need to have uh, computational tools and, and you need to manage computational skills, but also you need a, a problem, an application problem. And these three things connected make a data science. And our conference put the focus on that. And that is why uh, during all, along all these years, our conference are uh, strengthen the data science community because a lot of projects begin in, in Latin art and we have continued the presentations uh, across the years uh, and see the evolution of different projects in our conference. And also talking about some evolution, here I have a, a try to summarize some uh, data that we have. We have uh, two uh, bar graph. Uh, the color represents the conference that were in person and um, green is in person and orange is virtual. We have information of the total number of participants and here the total number of, of contributions. What we can see, okay, the first one, we have around 100 uh, participants and this uh, growth in the second edition that were around 215 participants and in the, in the pandemic that grows until have 1,000. A lot of people get involved with Latin art and get con connected with our event. And last year we have the next one that was also in person. And you can see that our participation also grow. We, we were around uh, 300 participants. And for this edition that will be on November, we uh, just check the data and we have like around 400 uh, participants that will go connect and probably we will have more because they can uh, get uh, registered until the end uh, the, the, before the conference. And also how, how is the evolution of the contribution? We can see that right now uh, at the beginning was around 60 uh, contributions and right now we have around, um, around uh, 80 uh, contributions. Then that is kind of summarize the evolution of our conference. And, and how we are alternating between in-person and virtual. And as a summary of, of what is going on or what happened in our conference, we have a collage of images that show how happy we are uh, in this event that is also really important for us. And the first edition in Buenos Aires, um, what, why we have the editions, one in Buenos Aires, one in Santiago, and one in Montevideo? Because at the beginning, our objective, since we were one chair from Argentina, one chair from Chile, and one chair from Uruguay. Our objective was to have one conference in each country. And that we what, what is happening here. The first one was in Argentina, the second one was in Chile, and after that we have the pandemic, and we have Montevideo in Uruguay that was kind of delayed, but we have that last year and was also amazing. That is some of the summer summarize our evolution in terms of uh, the conference events across the years. And other important point for us uh, about the conference is this is a conference of many balances, balance in three points. We have balance in terms of global and local. We have cultural balance and uh, balance between academy and industry. What is the meaning of this? Uh, in terms of local and global, we always pay attention to try to develop local expertise and try to put as one of the keynotes should be like a lo local a local person, but also we bring people that are um, um, relevant or have relevant role in the community. And that was really important for all Latin American people. For example, we bring, we have um, a reference of our community like Harley Wiccan, Dai Cook, Max Kuhn, and that is really important for us because people, when see that uh, uh, global reference, came here and teach you directly that have a really 
impactful effect in 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 people that participate in our community. Uh, they 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 see that it's real that we can make really good things, and also we are trying to develop local expertise, and it is it is the thing that we are working on. The second point or important point is the cultural diversity of our conference. We have a trilingual conference. You can talk in English, you can talk in Portuguese, you can talk in Spanish, and we can deal with that. And this means that we are really kind of open in that sense and works. You, you, at the beginning, if you think in the idea, you say, oh, this is crazy, but you will see that it's really a good. If you feel comfortable in Portuguese, talk in Portuguese, and we will deal with, deal with that situation and make the connection uh, if you have a question in Spanish and the other in Portuguese, we will find a way. And this is a, something really important. Also, we are very diverse in terms of this is a, a thing that happened from the beginning, like uh, inside our ladies. We are all of us are, are ladies, and there are a lot of our uh, in the organization team, our ladies is always there. And then uh, also from the beginning, we have a code of conduct and we are taking care uh, about that thing. And um, finally, in terms of industry and academic balance, we also have that our conference is a combination of the two worlds. You can have professors from a relevant university talking, and also you have people that work in real life with very complex problems in industry. And if you see here, for example, I, I put our keynotes uh, from last year, we are taking care of these three balance, we are we are having gender balance. We have Daiku, Kanhana. Also, we have Fabrizio and Max Kuhl. And, and and you can see like the academic and the industry and the public sector. But also you can see the gender balance, and also you can see that um, uh, it's it's a diverse panel. And you have it, 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 Fabrizio is a local uh, a lo local person, and they are from global uh, international uh, keynotes. Then uh, you can see like a summary of the many balances of uh, Latin art. And for this edition, this edition will be online, will be between 18 uh, and 22 of November. We we already talked about the number of participants. We have already um, around 80 contributions, two keynotes, eight tutorials, two satellite events, uh, there are open science translation hackathon and the dev days. And um, our two keynotes will be Julia Silch and Will Lando. And I will not mention specifically all the tutorials that we have, but you can see that we have tutorials from intermediate, beginner, and more expert level covering a lot of different uh, computational tools like uh, GitHub, Shiny, uh, managing big, uh, big da data set, application in sp spatial data, and things like that. You have time to enroll if you are interested. In our web page, you can find all the information, and we wish to see you in our next edi edition. Uh, and also, in this point, I want to thank uh, to our sponsor for this year. As always, we have our consortium that is really important for us and Epsilon have been uh, a sponsor just from the beginning and this year we incorporated Syncra. And also we want to thank uh, our supporters and community partners like our OpenSci and our contributors and finally Jumping Rivers. Um, and also something important that I want to Thank is all our organizing team. I will mention Andrea Gomez, Beatriz Mills, Macarena Quiroga, Mauro Loprete, Juan Pablo Ruiz, Paola Corrales, Patricia Loto, and Luis de Verde. And they are a key, very important part of our conference and the success of our conference because without uh, them, we don't have conference. And thank you for them. And right now, Yanni will talk about Latin art success stories and future projects. Thank you. Thank you, Nati. Um, let's go to the next slide. Um, so the idea of this uh, part is to try to highlight some of the um, uh, project and impacts and um, um, other kind of activities that Latin art host kind of beyond of only the conference. So what other things happens in the region and in the community? 
Um, and Latin art is kind of the space where this is happening. So the, the first one that I want to mention is called Clinica de Charlas. We will be a talk clinic. And in, it is a space to get support for your talk for Latin art and other conferences. So here is an example. Um, it is a tweet for Hadley Wiccan that is mentioning the first um, talk in Spanish in the POSIT uh, conference. And the, the translation of the Latin art tweet says that the first talk in Spanish at our studio conf was born in the talk clinic channel a Latin art slack. So this is this is the highlight because it was in Spanish, but we have many, many other people um, uh, getting their uh, submission accept um, after they share on the Slack, share with the community and get a lot of feedback on how to improve uh, that submission. Not only for uh, POSITCOM, let's go to the next slide, but also for USAR, for example. And one of the things um, that we also have been doing it's not only the Slack and the support of the people who are in the Slack, but it's also um, a, a meetup with our ladies in, in Chile on how uh, you can prepare your talk proposal for Latina or these other um, conferences. That Riva is, is the one teaching us how, to, how we can make a, a very good proposal, a successful proposal. So this is a way that the community support each other to reach places that sometimes or otherwise can be seen difficult to achieve or really, really far away from us. So yes, please, to the, to the next net. The, the other thing is uh, after we have some of the tutorials on Latin on how to develop package, the first one was uh, by Hadley Wickman, we start to see a lot of new packages um, starting uh, to pop up in, in Latin America. And Latin art was the place where people present their packages or go to get ideas. And I want to mention these two examples um, because we have the EPH package that is about the, the household survey in Argentina um, that uh, inspired the, a similar package in Uruguay. And we also have, uh, have this um, GEO um, packages, uh, GEOR from Argentina and GEOU from Uruguay that was inspired by Chile Mapas, another package. And Chile Mapas wasn't present in Latinar, but the author of this package know each other in person in Latinar and they start talking and they start sharing their ideas and they feel inspired and they build these tools that are very useful for doing analysis in, in our region. So Latin art is also a space to learn, share, share ideas and get inspired. The next. Uh, it's also a space to create and work on collaborative way. Um, so one of the, the, the projects that uh, Latin art has been kind of the pivot of the space where people can do this work is translations. So there you can see there a tweet by Mine Sentikaya Runda with the picture of all the people who participate in the translation of R4DS to Spanish that were present in Chile <laughs> at that moment. So that is that is the, um, the picture of, of the team. And then you can also see the translation to Portuguese of the second edition. And this project happens also some of the discussion in our Slack, in the channel Traduzao, uh, R4DS and Traduccion Traduzao. So people discuss and engage and learn about this project in our Slack too. Um, please, the next, the next. And it's also um, for working in translation for other projects. So this, these two previous examples were about a book but we also have this translaton, uh, like for our open site. Um, in, in 2022, we have this space to work on translation to Spanish and Portuguese to base our errors. So it was very cool after the, the conference to see that in the next version of R, <laughs> some of the contributions that people did in these events were there. Um, and then in last year in Montevideo, we also have 
um, not only the base R translation, but also for the data table package. So this is really cool to see how our conference is the place where different um, activities and collaborative projects can find a place to be, to, to, yeah, to that we can contribute. And then we also wanted to mention the scholarship. And here is when the sponsors become really, really important uh, for us because it, it allows us to provide uh, travel, accommodation, uh, conference tickets and tutorials or some combination of those to people who otherwise will not be able to participate in the uh, in-person um, uh, version. So here is uh, an example that um, one our ladies of Lima that come to Latin Conf in, in Chile um, thanks to this scholarship. So all, very much of the support we get is for being able to let a lot of people to participate. So we want that people can be part of Latina. So in the online, uh, we usually uh, don't charge. It is uh, free, um, except for the tutorials, um, but we, we use that to uh, pay for tutors. And as a summary, um, our conference is a space to learn about their community, contribute to different projects, Create or become part of the R user groups and our latest chapter of, on the region, update your knowledge and meet regional talent. And that map of X, X stickers <laughs> um, shows different organizations of communities and other groups which uh, one uh, Latin R has worked together. So you can see there are several other uh, groups that have been organizing satellite events or uh, giving tutorials or help with Latinar, uh, including Conectar, which is the other Latin American conference uh, in the region. Okay, okay let's talk about the future. Um, uh, the next slide, please. Um, first of all, what to expect about like the near future, what is going to happen on this edition. As Natalia already mentioned, we will have like uh, a lot of talks. We will have uh, nine workshops. Those workshops include space for uh, collaborative work. So we're like trying to follow the, the, um, the path from the previous uh, editions in, in terms of fostering spaces for collaboration, um, offering an array of workshops that can um, help this very broad audience we have that Natalia also mentioned in terms of there are people from industry, there are people from academia, there are people from different backgrounds that come here and start working together and learning things that we expect to like see the results in the future. Like as, as Yanni mentioned, a lot of the packages that we're seeing now presented on Latinar, um, it's people that attended the um, our packages workshop that was held on the 2019 edition. So uh, we're very happy about that. Uh, and in the next slide, a little more about what are the um, what talks we're going to see. So um, there are a lot of um, talks about packages, regional packages. That's a trend that's always like every year we start receiving like more and more uh, proposals about people are, that are developing their own packages. And we are very happy about that because that means that um, people are producing things in our region, for our region and for the world. And it has been, Latin art has been a space for people have um, a space for showcase what they're working on. We will also see a lot of talks about package development, like kind of meta talks about how to develop packages. Uh, the um, Grant Cookbook is going to be presented. If you want to learn more about like the R Dev containers for developing, if you want to learn about like how your documentation could be multilingual, there are a lot of talks that are giving support people on how to develop packages and other computational tools. Shiny has also been a trend. Um, and the last year, we always have a Shiny tutorial, thanks to Epsilon. And there are a lot of people showcasing the Shiny apps that they are developing for very different, in very different contexts. We've seen a lot of um, use of Shiny in the public sector. That's something that we're going to see this year, too. A lot of use of Shiny in industry and also in the context of academia. And in previous year, we have seen a lot of 
talks about uh, open data, about using open data sets, about uh, cover, um, public data that are available uh, in different uh, countries. And this year we started seeing a lot of talks of people working in the public sector that are presented uh, presenting what they're doing there. This is something that has happened before, but I think this year we have, in previous year, we, ha we have had a lot of uh, talks from, for example, the statistics uh, departments in government. And this year we have a lot of, of application, for example, in health um, or in education, like how uh, the public sector is using open source tools, and sometimes open source tools that have been developed in our region for um, facing the challenges uh, in terms of managing their data. So we're very happy uh, about that too. And we also this year have a lot of talks uh, about uh, natural resources, ecology, the environment. That's a topic that's very relevant to our region. And there are a lot of people developing tools to analyze that kind of data. Data, And also a lot of people using, for example, Shiny or using different like um, statistic, statistic methods to understand what's happening in our region uh, regarding that topic. And that's also uh, aligned with our what we can call our classic topics. Um, we always have like a lot of talks uh, from people like developing statistical models, people that are, um, for example, um, reflecting about how we can teach these tools to other people. Um, there are a lot of talks about community efforts uh, in different areas. So that, those are kind of our classic topics that you will always go to see happening on Latinar. But you also have like these trends that uh, we are seeing um, this year. And that's in terms of uh, like the near future. And what are the challenges? If you think about like the long future, like um, what to expect about Latinar in the future, uh, it's challenging organizing an annual conference. Uh, that's why last year we made the decision of alternating one year online and one year in person. Um, this is a volunteer driven conference. Every people, every person that works on the organizing team, it's a volunteer. Um, and we're, that, this is a group that we um, really want to take care of. These are, there are some people in the organizing team that have been there since the inception of the conference. There are people that start like at, as attendees and then presenters and then join the, organi the organizing team. So like the organizing team is a community, like a small community that we try to foster. And we need to balance like um, the, the workload with what we can offer to people. So that's why one of the reasons in terms of online versus in-person conference. So having one year online and one year in person, it will help us balance like the cost of having an in-person conference and also having if we have a conference that only happens in person, there are a lot of people that will not be able to attend. So the idea to alternate is also that every other year, people who, for whatever reason, are not able to attend in person to the conference can experience the same because we will have like an, an online version. And in-person conference, as I said before, uh, are expensive. That's why we are so grateful um, for our uh, sponsors. Um, just as, as an example, last year we were able to charge less than what we charged in 2019. That seemed that's strange. We usually things became like more expensive throughout the years, but we were able to lower the, the cost thanks to the, the sponsors. And that's very important for, for us because there are a lot of very good data science conferences around the world, but there are a lot of them that are very expensive. Like for someone from Latin America, it's like like more than the minimum weight, sometimes like three or four or five times the minimum weight. So those are conferences that are like beyond reach for a lot of people. So we want to keep our conference uh, accessible in terms of uh, having a conference that is not expensive for people to attend. That is why we're having like this um, different prices in terms of uh, if you're in academia, industry, we have the scholarships that, that Diani mentioned, and that has been like uh, very important for us having keeping this, confer this conference accessible in, in that way. And something that we also want to share, um, 
as I said before, uh, organizing conference can be very challenging. There are a lot of small things that people have to do to that happen behind the scenes. And, our, and one of those things is, is managing, for example, submissions. We have been using Open Review, an open source platform for managing peer review processes. Um, it's a very it's a great platform, um, but it involves a lot of work. Uh, you know, for uh, retrieving submissions, sending messages. Uh, there are a lot of things that, that need to be done. And we're very grateful of the Art Consortium for uh, giving us a small project grant to develop a package that make uh, easier to, to uh, use this platform from your like R session, uh, being able to connect those things. And, and that can, we, we expect like relieve the workload of people organizing, not only in LTNR, but we expect that this is a package that is going to be useful for other people that want to use the Open Review API to manage their conference. And finally, um, in terms of the future, something that I want to highlight, um, Yanni and, and, and Natalia have mentioned, like, what are the key features of LatinR, how we have tried to make this conference accessible, balanced, uh, and as a place for collaboration and for giving, uh, for giving people opportunities to participate in this project. Uh, we're more than a conference. We're not just a thing that happened once a year and then it's done. Well, Slack is a, is a space that we uh, that exists throughout the year. So I think Latinar is a space where people can collaborate and work and do things together throughout the year that happens to have a conference like once a year where people have space to showcase in a couple of days to the world what, what, what they've been working on. Um, so there's our web page in case you, you want to learn more about the, the this year's edition, how to register, how to like sign up for the tutorials. And also if you want to learn more about previous edition, um, you can check our YouTube channel where there, uh, there you will find like recording of the keynotes of the in-person editions and also all the videos from the online editions. So there's a lot of material there. If you there, some of the workshops also have been recorded. So there are a lot of like learning material that you will find uh, on our YouTube. And that's the link to our Slack. So is, if you're not there yet, uh, we invite you to join the Slack and start being a part of, of our community. Thank you. Well, thank you to all of you be here. And if you have any question, uh, you can ask us or you can let the questions in the YouTube channel after this webinar will be uploaded. Um, well, thank you again. I'm reading, I'm reading some familiar names on the attendees. So thank you so much for being here. <laughs> this is so nice. I'm just going to give them a couple of minutes to see if they have any questions, and then I'll end the webinar. OK. <laughs> we have some comments there. Thank you, Monica. Monica say, uh, beautiful to see you all here. Good luck on the next edition. Thank you, Moni.
So right now we we have opened the registration for the conference and also for all the tutorials. So you're still on time to, to register there. Um, uh, please help us to spread the war. If you know people that say, hey, it will be cool that they attend this. This is a good year. Uh, we remember that it's free of charge uh, this year. So um, you can register and try a little bit of Latina to see if you like it. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, I guess nobody has any more questions, so I'm going to go ahead and end the webinar here. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you, Liana. Bye. Bye-bye. Ciao.